Good morning. While I'm waiting for my slides to come up, there they are. I will tell you in uh, 30 seconds or less how to manage a hypothyroid patient. I learned that because it was my first patient when I uh, was an intern. I saw a lady that um, weighed 80 pounds and had a heart rate of 170, rapid AFib, and, and bulging eyes. We wiped out her thyroid, and then we gave her thyroid in the form of T4. Uh, we normalized her TSH into the middle of the range, and that was that. That's exactly how you should manage thyroid patients. At least that's what I was taught back then. Um, I have come to understand, however, that when I was doing that, I was not optimizing their therapy. And what I try to explain to doctors in the training courses is that they must understand that what we were taught before, which was put the level in the normal range, is not necessarily what's optimal. Yesterday we looked at many of the different hormones and tried to figure out which was best, and what we discovered was in the medical literature pretty much supported that optimal levels are at the upper end of normal for a 20 to 25-year-old seems to work the best. There's hundreds of articles in the literature that support that. Uh, in the courses that we teach here at A4M and the courses that I teach also, we emphasize the medical literature. If it's not peer-reviewed and if it's not evidence-based, we don't necessarily recommend it, but all of this is peer-reviewed and evidence-based. We just, as physicians, tend not to see it or we tend not to be able to appreciate what the literature shows us. So what I want to do is to uh, take you through a path to explain what these studies show and why we should probably change our thought process in how we prescribe thyroid in addition to all of the other hormones. I thought my lecture was for an hour, it's uh, for a half hour, so there's an hour's worth of slides. I left those slides in there so that you could review at a later time, so I will flip fast um, uh, through some of the slides. Thyroid is a hormone that's uh, very similar to all of the other hormones. It affects all body organs, all body systems. It's responsible for temperature, metabolism, energy, protein synthesis, also protein breakdown, but also fat uh, breakdown, as well as cholesterol breakdown. It helps improve cognition. Uh, there's over 200 symptoms related to low thyroid. You don't have to have all of the symptoms to be low thyroid. You could simply have one or two symptoms and still be hypothyroid. It happens to be that the thyroid's effect on the cellular level is really what causes our symptoms. Uh, just briefly, there's um, three situations that I will d describe to you. The first one's the easy one, it's hypothyroidism, the classic one where the TSH level goes up due to a decrease of production by the thyroid gland in producing thyroid hormone. What I find, that's relatively easy. Look at the TSH, it's elevated, you treat until you get the TSH back into the normal range. But what about all the other patients that have normal TSHs and they still have thyroid symptoms? The head of the Thyroid Association of America states emphatically, if the TSH is normal, it is in the normal range, but they still have low thyroid symptoms, it's due to something else other than thyroid. It is not your thyroid. The TSH is a perfect test and if it is in range, the symptoms are not due to that. It's due to something else. Question one is what? Question number two is why is it always the thyroid hormone that resolves those symptoms and nothing else does? Antidepressants don't, other medications don't. It's only the thyroid that makes those symptoms go away. So there's a perhaps misunderstanding between the endocrine community, the internal medicine community, and uh, shall we say the community that optimizes hormones. There's a difference. So one of the things that they, the other communities do not look at is the conversion of T4 to T3. The endocrine community thinks that measuring T3 is a lousy test. It's a lousy test because they don't know what to do with it. But it's an excellent test. It's better than the T4 and the T3, or excuse me, the TSH, because it's the T3 at the cellular level that's responsible for the thyroid hormone's actions. It's not TSH and it's not T4. So if you have a conversion problem of T4 to T3, then that is significant. And the third situation, which is now becoming described with all hormones, not only diabetes, not only testosterone, uh, not only with estrogen, but also with thyroid, is a receptor site insensitivity or hypofunction syndrome where the patient is euthyroid, their TSH is normal, their T4 and their T3s are normal, but they still have symptoms of low thyroid which according to the American Academy of Endocrinology supports that those symptoms are related to something else other than thyroid, but as per the medical literature, the only thing that makes those symptoms better is thyroid hormone. So how do you explain that? It's because of the hyposensitivity at the cellular site. 
Let's look at some levels. Uh, on the top slide, you'll see a TSH of 112, uh, which indicates significant hypothyroidism. Uh, you'll see a free T4 that's relatively low, but a free T3 that's extremely low at 2.0. Now, I ask you, which hormone here is responsible for the symptoms of low thyroid? Is it the TSH? No, it's not. It's extremely high, and it's a great predictor of hypothyroidism, but it's a lousy predictor of the symptoms that the patient is going to experience. It's that free T3 at the cellular level that's responsible for these symptoms. The free T3 we see here is 2.0, which is quite low, which indicates this patient is quite symptomatic. Moving down, the TSH now is 25. It's slightly elevated above baseline, which indicates some mild clinical hypothyroidism. And the reason it's clinical hypothyroidism is because the T3 is still low. It's still 2.4, which is at the lower end of the range, so you will still see some symptoms associated with this TSH of 25. Again, at the cellular level, it's not the TSH that causes the symptoms, it's the T3. Moving ahead, we now see a TSH of 1.1, which is perfectly normal. We will walk away from this patient saying your thyroid is absolutely normal, there's nothing wrong with you whatsoever. Your symptoms are not related to thyroid, they're related to some other problem that you have in your brain, like a deficiency of serotonin. The problem is, when you look at the T3, the free T3 is 1.8. How can we deny thyroid to this patient? Well, because the TSH is normal, and that's what we're commonly taught to do. But nevertheless, the only thing that's going to fix this patient is raising the T3, which is the active hormone at the cellular level, up into the more optimal range. Otherwise, this patient will remain significantly hypothyroid as far as symptoms are concerned, and we basically shuffle them off to the psychiatrist for antidepressants because it's obviously not thyroid because the TSH is normal. This TSH is 7.1. This is called subclinical hypothyroidism, where the TSH is slightly elevated, but the T4 and T3 are typically normal. So when we see this TSH of mild elevation, there's some controversy whether we treat this or not, because the TSH is not that high. But again, we fail to understand and appreciate it's the T3 at the cellular level, the free T3, that is responsible for the symptoms and for the metabolism of this patient. Even though you see a TSH of 7.1 and think, well, that's not bad, the free T3 is still 2.2. It's very low. They will have the same amount of symptoms that the patient will experience with a TSH of 112. And yet we still continue to say, well, it's not the thyroid. They don't need thyroid. It's got to be something else. Lastly, TSH is suppressed to 0.1. This patient is obviously hyperthyroid. The free T4 is elevated. So this is a straightforward hyperthyroid case, correct? They have symptoms, perhaps, of tachycardia. They have symptoms of uh, jitteriness. They may have symptoms of sweating but yet they still complain that they're cold, tired, fatigued, and they're gaining weight. Why? Because the free T3 is still low at 2.4. Well, how can this be? Well, it's a lousy test. It's not a lousy test. It tells us what's going on at the cellular level, but we tend to miss this. And this is what I've missed for so many years. I kept seeing the patients that said, I, but I still don't feel well. And when I up my thyroid, if I take it myself, I feel a little bit better. Well, nevertheless, uh, just because they feel a little bit better, um, well, that's not good. If your TSH is fine, you still don't need more, but they, they crave more, they want more, they're trying to tell you something. If you listen to the patient long enough, they will tell you. The problem is I'm not getting enough thyroid, but we say, yes, you are, because the TSH is fine. But when you look at the free T3s and you still see them low, and you get that free T3 up, the patient magically says, I feel so much better now, thank you very much. And yet, I was taught, look at the TSH and the T4, that's all you need, the T3 is a lousy test, but yet, when I look at hundreds of these patients, they all seem to have low free T3s. Now, we were taught yesterday to optimize all of our hormones. Well, what about thyroid? As per the literature and in my experience, when you optimize T3, just like you optimize testosterone, estradiol, progesterone, DHEA, growth hormone, then you will typically see an improvement in the symptoms because we're helping to improve that signal transduction inside the cell that the T3 provides. If there's no T3 at the receptor site, because the levels of T3 in the serum are low, you're not going to see much of a response in prescribing thyroid to that patient. Lastly, a TSH of 0.02, well, it's suppressed, just like the one above there, but the free T3 is 4.3. Yet we're taught, well, the TSH is suppressed, that's bad, that's going to cause hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, we don't want that. But yet the patient says, I feel so good. Leave it there, don't touch it. Please don't touch it. This is the first time I've felt well in years. 